why do you write a memoir? So let's, let's start with you, Richard, at the end there. Okay. <laughs> Richard. Well, I think that um, every memoir, I've written two memoirs, and I think every memoir has sort of a, a, a different reason for being, a different sort of impulse. Uh, the first memoir uh, that I wrote was uh, about my experiences of serving as inaugural poet, uh, a presidential inaugural poet. And that was just, uh, I just needed to write that down to feel like it really happened. It was the six most like incredible weeks of my life. And so that took on a very different flavor, a very different reason. Um, the Prince of Los Cucuyos uh, was, uh, in a way, I had exhausted my life in poetry, <laughs> like my story. And I was kind of curious, just out of almost creative curiosity, what would my life look like without line breaks? And thinking about <laughs> when I unpack those stories, and it's really interesting that my memoir is kind of half of my first book of poetry, just unpacked into story. And I knew I wanted to tell so many stories. But I think at the bottom line of all this, and I, and I think we will probably have similar answers, is that ultimately uh, we're trying to find our own story. We have to find out something, you know, life passes us by, we're imprinted, these things happen, we're going about our daily world, we're writing other books, and it's a time to pause and say, what did that mean? What is that memory? What about, why are these things haunting me? And we come to the page through art to figure it out. Ultimately, the, I also want to say, because memoir, memoir is an interesting genre, because if one thing I learned, it's not, it's, it's art, right? And it's sometimes, it's not just telling your story, but it's how does art let you tell the story you didn't even know you had? Um, right, it's not a factual list right, of what right, happens in your right. life. So I come, in the same ways I come to other genres as well, I think in, in a similar way is to find out about the self and ultimately let go of the self mm -hmm. and give that to the reader. Um, and that's part of the, the process of, I think, of artists in general. But. So Danny, uh, same question, but also I, I think when you, you read Danny's book or when I read your book, there, there is a real sense that uh, of... Of, of feeling of otherness from sort of the get-go, from the beginning of your childhood. Um, so here's your, then you have a, a, an active event that happens that, that surely changes your life. Right, so um, I wrote, I've written five memoirs. No one is more shocked about that than me. <laughs> um, I was recently described in a piece that was written about me as a public contemplative. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's, that's what I've become. Um, <laughs> I, when I first began writing memoir, it was because I thought that my autobi autobiographical material was haunting my fiction, and I wrote my first memoir, Slow Motion, as sort of a curative for that, because I felt like my fiction was constantly thematically coming around to one way or another, um, some kind of catastrophic, shocking event happening to the narrator. Um, no matter what it was, it always kind of just came back to that um, to that place, to those themes. But so three years ago, um, I made the discovery uh, that was shocking and t wholly unexpected and that I wasn't looking for, that my dad, who I've written about a lot, for those of you who have read my work, um, the dad who raised me had not been my biological father. And I felt almost instantly yeah. that um, everything had led to this that all of my writing, um, you know, when I would say why memoir, what was I digging for? Why was all of my fiction in some way or another thematically revolving around family secrets? Mm -hmm. And it turned out that I was the family secret. Mm -hmm. You know, I wrote in Inheritance, I always knew there was a secret. What I didn't know, the secret was me. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think there's some way in which we always know. And um, there's a phrase in Inheritance that I think sums up maybe the memoiristic impulse, which is the unthought known. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a psychoanalytic phrase, but the thing that we absolutely know in our bones, but it's too dangerous to think. We can't let ourselves think it. And so when we write it, we're not thinking it. We're sort of following the line of words, and it's a discovery. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a great quote in the beginning of your book uh, that I latched onto by Orwell. If you want to keep a secret, you must hide mm -hmm. it from yourself. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, yes, the, the, the knowing that you're always other and then finally coming through. And Kiese, tell us why you wrote this memoir because in the beginning of your book, which I won't give away, but you, you tell us what you try, you know, you tried writing something else, but then you mm -hmm. landed here. Yeah, thank y'all for coming out today. Um, my mother had me when she was 19 years old. She was my first friend, my first librarian, <laughs> my first teacher. Um, 
and she fed me books from the time I was like one or two years old. And we just got to a point in our life where we were being swallowed by different kinds of addiction, um, eating too much, starving too much, drinking too much, doing other kinds of things. And for me, I mean, I wish it was, I wish I could make it sound more literary, but we were just at a point where our, our relationship was literally about to die. Uh, both of us, I don't know how we would have lived much longer if we kept going the route we were going. And again, the gift she gave me was the gift of rereading and the gift of rewriting. So I wanted to try to use the art that she gave me on the base level to attempt to save our relationships, which I thought would also be an attempt to save our lives. And I was judging a lot of memoir contests at the time, so I could look and see what memoirs were doing well and what memoirs weren't doing well. And most memoirs I read were kind of obsessed with this notion of progress. And I just wanted to kind of create a, uh, a memoir that obliterated that notion of progress. And to do that, I had to not just write a memoir, but I had to write a memoir to my mother, mm -hmm. who was the first person who taught me how to use words to survive.